All right. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to SES number 337. We're currently sitting in the lobby between Team Overlord Jen and Summary Execution. Just waiting for the last few members to drop in, and then we'll get this thing started. Now the lobby timer has started and we're looking at a four minute timer until the match will start. So they've got three, uh, three minutes and 30 seconds until the ships are locked and they need to go with what they've decided. Now until then they can freely switch between the, uh, whatever ships they want. Now we're going on Battle on the Dunes, a very long range map, and we're seeing a Mobula and Magnate being hovered along with a Magnet and Goldfish. So interestingly, it seems like Blue Team is going for more of a brawl setup with the Red Team probably opting for some sort of more long range here with the Mobula. Now it's quite interesting because we don't see many Mobulas around anymore, and it's going to be interesting to see if they keep it, what they'll do with it. Alright, and as such, we are locked and we are ready to go. In just 30 seconds, we'll start off the match and we'll be ready to go.
All right, and there we go. We are headed into the game. Battle on the dunes. All right, and there we go, uh, directly into the action. We've got the fancy Hydra, piloted by um, Dementia. It's a Mobula. We're seeing a Gatling Artemis, Mercury on top with another Artemis lower deck, and then a Hades on the side. Then we've got the Pure Nonsense, a Magnate, piloted by Finx, already on fire, already getting mashed, and we won't even see the armaments on that thing before it blows up. Moving on to the Borealum, piloted by Senok, it is a magnate with a right side Gatling, Flak and Hwatcha, along with a left side Lumberjack, um, Flak and Hades. And then the Home Resonance, piloted by Artemis, it's a Carafish, left side Gatling and Banshee, right side Flamethrower. So a really aggressive start from the blue team, already taking home one point. Now the Home Resonance keeping up the aggression here on the Fancy Hydra. Mobula's not really doing well against this sort of aggression from a fish. We see the Borealum hot on their heels, providing some support fire. The Pure Nonsense is coming in here, trying to get some support on the, on the uh, ships to support their ally. Home Resonance taking a beating from those Flax, but the Mobula goes down either way. Very hard ship to try and protect against these, uh, this sort of fire. Now the Pure Nonsense is backing off. Well, we see that long range from the Borealum going out, they're getting a few hits in. And they need to be careful so they don't get popped out. Home Resonance now moving in, taking some laser from Pure Nonsense. Taking some Gatling, we've got that double piercing going, but the Home Resonance does a beautiful job of soaking most of that damage with the balloon. And they keep the flame up, really crippling that ship. You see the flame stacks going out on the Pure Nonsense here, and they're not doing well at all, they're broken. They've got no balloon. And the flame just keeps on going here. That ship is not going to last long without some sort of intervention. And they seem to be getting crushed against the ground here. And down they go. Now the Mobula is back. And this is a very open map. So they've immediately spotted it. However, they do have some distance here. About 500 to 1,000 meters in between them. But they quickly close this distance as they go for a rush on the Mobula. Now, the Mobula is probably expecting the ally to be able to spawn in here. But it might just be a bit too late for them. Yeah, we see they've spawned in over here. The Pure Nonsense is moving in, but it might just be too late as the Fancy Hydra goes down. Four points for the blue team so far. The Pure Nonsense is in a really bad position. Home Resonance is doing some really cool maneuvers there with the Drift Sail. Now we see them coming up behind the Pure Nonsense. What an amazing maneuver. And now the flame is being laid upon them. They've got no balloon. Flames on most components. They're not going to last long under this sort of pressure. Mobula hasn't even spawned in yet. And down they go, an amazing display by the blue team, summary execution. Really aggressive game, and the red team just had a real problem trying to protect the Mobula, and then after that it just kind of continued, they kept up the aggression, and they were re uh, never really allowed to recover from that. So just an overall amazing game from the blue team.
now we might be seeing a bit of a lull here in the stream as we're waiting for the other matches to finish up.
All right, and so match five is finished. We're moving on to match seven. We are ready to go. We've got Team Overlord Jen here again versus the Jackdaws, who unfortunately got bumped down from match five down here into the lower brackets. We're on Canyon Ambush, one of the most loved maps of the game. It's going to be really exciting to see these teams duke it out. Now we're giving just these teams a bit more time to get the members in before we start up the lobby timer and we are ready to go. And there we go, the lobby timer has started, so four minutes until we kick this match off and we get going. Now, unlike last match, we're looking at more of a close-ranged map. Of course, there are opportunities for some long-range, but most of the map consists of these corridors going throughout the con canyon, meaning that most teams will opt for something mid-range or more brawly. Now, we see a Corsair, a Squid, a Pyramidian, and Goldfish, and all of them fall into that bit of a stereotype of more brawl-oriented.
And there we go. Now the ships are locked. We have 30 seconds until the match starts. And we get this show on the road. And there we go, the captains are being asked to ready up, and they are very quick in doing so, and off we go into Canyon Ambush. Alright, and we are ready to go. So starting off, we've got the Jupiter piloted by Dementio or Corsair with a front carronade. On the right side, another carronade along with a Gatling. And on the left side, a Gatling along with a Hawatcha. Then we've got the Inaptitude piloted by Finks. A Spire with a carronade on the front, Gatling and Banshee up top along with another Banshee downstairs. Then you've got the Pickle booth piloted by Travel. It is a Meta Midian, no, Ardling. So Gatling and Artemis upstairs, along with the Flamer on three, and Flak on four. And then last but not least, we've got the Stumbly Minnow, piloted by Fishy My Toes. It's a fish with a right side Flamer, Carronade up top, along with a Banshee, and another Banshee on the left side. Alright, so let's see where these its teams are headed. They are actually meeting each other immediately here. With a nasty ram going out from the Jupiter, both losing... No, Stumbling Minnow losing hull and Balloon. Getting pelted by the Inaptitude. Not taking too much Perma, but they are looking bad in terms of uh, their armor and their Balloon. Now, the Pikaliga booth helping as much as they can. The Stumbling Minnow keeps getting shot by this Spire here, and they need to stop it. Now, the Banshees are coming in. Stumbling Minnow just barely alive here. Uh, Piggly move no also losing hope. Oh, and in comes the Saldarim. Welcome. Good evening. Well, but uh, Piggly Gaboo just got a really good uh, engagement with the amplitude, it seems. Uh, questionable. Yeah, but it still seems very heavily in Red's favor here. They have yeah. them firmly in their grasp. And it is a blue ship that goes down first. Hey, I just want some artifact. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, and I think the Stumbling Minnow will f uh, follow shortly. Uh, both yeah, but they did manage to get some of that perma on the Inaptitude. They might even... They were close to getting a kill there. The Inaptitude was in a nasty situation. Yeah, they just I mean, barely they, managed they to kill the, the rebirth, fish. Uh, they got the Balloon Rebirth just in time to not die on terrain. Yeah, so 2-0 for Red Team. And they're advanced quite far into the map here, so they're going to move into the blue team spawn. Hmm. I would actually say, like, blue team would probably choose the west spawn. Um, I mean east. <laughs> yeah, we see them opting for the east spawn here. They're probably going to be able to see each other soon. The red team seems to have suspected as much. And now we see a spot yeah, on the Jupiter. Uh, well, that just looks like a magical rangefinder spot, though, as no one should have a line on sight on anyone. <laughs> yeah, Whatever. there we go. All spots are out. Teams see each other. In aptitude, looking a bit low to go into this engagement. And we know that the blue team does have a lot of banshees, so they can get that explosive damage in between the quick uh, rebuilds of the um, spire uh, armor. I mean, as long as you... Actually, so this is actually that can serve as a gun platform. Yeah, kind of. Just have the Jupiter go in to grab all the attention. And then follow up with the inaptitude, dealing the damage. Yeah, that's kind of what, what, what we saw last engagement. So I'm guessing we'll see something very similar here. 
However, Jupiter taking some heavy damage here, losing balloon, losing an engine. And they managed to get the counter pop on the stumbling minnow. That's really important in those carronade battles so that you make sure to pop your enemy as well when you get popped. But stumbling minnow has no parachute. Oh, oh shit. Well, besides the fishing metal, there's no parachute, unlike the Manchego. That's, that's actually it's Jupiter double broken. Yeah, but now we're seeing the uh, drogue shoot pay off here as the Jupiter is keeping the height advantage in this battle. Meanwhile, yeah, the Naptitude going hard on the Piggy Liggy Booth. They get the hull break, they get the Banshees in. They just barely survive going under the Naptitude. Stumbleman also barely surviving a ram that could have been really nasty, but thanks for them, the physics this time worked in their favor, pushing them around. Yeah, the now Piggy Liggy Booth going him. down to the Naptitude. Really good job by the Naptitude, uh, beating them in a 1v1 with that low of a perma. But Stanley Minnow will probably go down here in a sec as long as the Jupiter is We'll see if they can manage to get out of the carronade ranges here, but they just don't. They get popped. Yeah. And now with the ineptitude loading in, lo joining in, they're most likely dead. Yeah. And it's actually interesting that uh, they didn't. They could have died earlier when they got ramped to the pipe, but they got pushed off of it instead of into the pipe. So, yeah, so far Team teams. Overlord Gen dominating this battle, not without costs though, the Naptitude looking a bit beat up at the moment. Yeah, but they're, they're still doing quite well, uh, doing the last engagement without actually losing any perma. And Blue Team opting for the Western spawn this time. Good yeah, Red Team once again moving into the center here, making sure they have a good line of sight across most of the spawns that the blue team can choose. Yeah, blue team, blue team actually chooses the only spawn where Red Team doesn't immediately have a line of sight on them. Uh, yeah, and that in turn up, also gives them information about where they are, so... Yeah. Okay, Stumbly Minnow... Okay, it seems like they want to go for the Neaptitude. But that pop just ruined the day, so they changed. His, uh, he changed his mind. Don't know. Hmm. And a bit of an interesting uh, choice for the Jupiter to go for the Piggy Liggy Booth there, considering how resistant they are to carronades generally. But the Inaptitude uh, has a Stumbly firm hold of the Stumbly Minnow broken, right now. Though. And half, half the half Stumbly Minnow's are already gone. Right on the Jupiter. Um. Oh, that's it. That's oh, we see the flax follow. coming in. <laughs> I was about to say Not no Not quite follow, in arming though. range, I believe. The, they are there. But there we go. Range. The red team takes it home. Yeah, but red team wins no matter what. As the fish just uh, exploded on some terrain. And that is a 5-0 victory for Team Overlord Genesis. Where's the jackdaws? Yeah, they played a really good aggressive game there. They were into their spawn before they had even more or less moved out. A very aggressive game from the Team Overlord Gen. Yep, and now we we're moving on to St. Elmo's Fire. We got kicked out of the top bracket by Steel League, Lepidoptera, and Team Overlord Gen going up against each other. <coughs> Well, that's going to be on Periton Rumble, another very close-ranged map, actually, with a whole lot of ramming potential. Nice. Usually some good uh, rumble overall. What? No, I just said <laughs> Periton usually has some good rumbling overall. Um, a lot of potential for brawling ships to really shine in there. Okay, I need water and yarn. And they're already here. <laughs> Whatever. I mean, some of these teams are really just on top of things. They they look at the challenge just as much as we do. And they know where they're supposed to be. 
Yeah. Just like the, the funny thing with that team, uh, with St. Elmo's Fire. I had them in my lobby and I had closed my lobby just to meet them again right now here. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I will, I will take over all the roughing stuff, of course. Yeah, I'm letting go of those controls to you. So you can go back to just streaming, having a relaxing day. Yeah, now I just need to use half my brain. <laughs> can put the other half in autopilot. Actually, no. Whoa, 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 whoa. <coughs> Damn it. That's really bad today. I see the uh, Cousin United front is still in Jan's mind. Oh yeah, we've got the Babushka's Banashi once again. Now, nah, Cousin United front is a different thing. It's, that has nothing to do with the Banashi. Oh, okay. Okay, then. Let me kick this off. Par oh god, is it Periton? Do I need to do that? It is Periton. <laughs> I thought you already changed that. Ah! I can do that real quick if you want. I just did. Oh, okay. Okay, three, two, one, go. Oh, sorry. Uh, so I see on your on your stream. Uh, yeah, I'm just Saint, looking Saint at Elmo's that right now. Being punished for having not having a square logo. And I thought I had restrictions. For this. I mean, when when people don't put in square logos, they usually just want to piss off the streamer. So. <laughs> <clears throat> so that's quite a lot of riders over there. There we go. Finally got a timer. <laughs> Oh, no, oh, no timer oh. yet. Um, <laughs> that is going to be what it is. I'm going to try and time in. on Two minutes. Yeah, two minute mark. Yeah, so that's a 120. Oh, yeah. So tell me when we close. Yeah, in the software you do. Oh. I don't know why, but I'm rather sleepy today. Well, it's been a quite dark day overall, at least in Sweden it has. Oh, it was a really bright day, it was almost summer here. Three, two, one. Oh, right, there we go. Two minute timer, we're joining in the main timer here. It's like we had uh, 15 degrees outside. And with the sun, I mean, on, on su Sundays, I really like to drink like a little bit of uh, cho hot chocolate. And we, j we just sat uh, outside in the sun, drinking, drinking coffee, chocolate, whatever. Oh, it's so nice. It does sound very nice. Yeah. <laughs> change, change back. <laughs> That's a lobby game, though. <laughs> I like it. It's not like uh, yeah, we've seen a whole yeah. lot of changes here. Yeah, it's not like some, some other teams where they just choose like two ships and they're gonna play those. <laughs> no matter what the enemy does, we are set. And another now change back. And now I actually need to start paying attention. Who gets to ask for a minute? Mm. 
<laughs> oh god, I have a, a song stuck in my head and I can't sing it. <laughs> it always sounds like a good combination. Uh, the, the thing is, if, if um, the, the song I have stuck in my head is a parody already, so... <laughs> Don't want to uh, get your stream claimed or something. Is, is it even yeah, we don't want that D DMCA coming after me. <laughs> okay, and oh, the timer just hit zero. And we're getting ready to ready up here. We'll see if the pilot's ready up. No, they don't. Not even remotely close. And as such, we move into Parrot and Rumble. Usually a very exciting map. It's a very small map. Spawns are close together. Usually close to the action. Here we go. Starting off right. with the SMS Temes, pil piloted by Captain John. It is an Artling, so Gatling and Artling, uh, Artemis up top with a Flame on three and Flak on four. Then you've got the Sentences Sandwich, piloted by Water, a Carrowfish, so Carronade up front, along with a Flame on right side, Banshee on left side, and another Banshee on left side. Ah! <sighs> and a pause has been called out. Yes. <laughs> Keep on going. <laughs> Is it my turn? Then I'm gonna... Yeah. It's yeah, your turn, we're, we're on the ship number three. Set number three is the Great VGs. Oh, <laughs> it's the Spire piloted by Dementio. He is bringing Watcher Banshee on bottom deck and Get Banshee on top. And the last ship is the Sorrow Goldfish piloted by Finks. He is bringing a Flame on the right, Hair Character in front, and Get Mortar. Ah. Uh, what are they? Can't stop it for it now. We're ready now. Okay then. Okay then. Let me get this going again. No. Yeah, and so we see the sorrow in the Sedna Sandwich. As soon as this is over, they are going to have line of sight of each other here, and they're going to go for each other immediately. Here we see them moving in through the alleyway. Now, the SMS Temas yeah. is right next to the Sentence Sandwich, and the Great BGS is going to be a bit late to the party here. However, also, that also gives them the element of surprise. Also, you're slow, Dimitri. You're really, really slow. I'm slow? Yes, yesterday, Steambreds and I did a call, whole ship call about both, uh, all four, and I feel, I feel like 10 seconds. <laughs> 10 20. Well, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, we, we, we kind of both like, were like, we, we challenged each other to do it. So, he, he called out Red Team while I put on the timer, then I called him Blue Team. Fun times. Anyways, uh, it seems like the skyscraper with the flat roof in the exact middle of this uh, map will be the cover of choice. And both teams will maneuver around it, trying to get some shots going. Yeah, we see both fishes here going for some cheeky pops. Uh, no one really wants to pass through because no, that means that being very exposed. Bounce on the train tracks here, and Sorrow is yeah, Sorrow pushing sees in with the their chance. Yeah, the Great Vegies. One well, that might up. be really bad oh. for the Sentence Sandwich. Just barely that missing that ram. Uh, just, uh, just an armor break though, no, no further damage. But now the yeah, get water yeah. on the side comes in handy. Great That's VGS being hard. forced to back off and the sentence of sandwich is kind of stuck on this side now. Which is really well, what you wanted to try and avoid with, with this. The, careful with the weird fish geometry. You see the Sorrow having the better thing. angle in this fish battle right now. The Great VGS seeing that they have to really move in if they want to try and save their ally. But it might just be too late here. The Great VG is broken, broken right now. But Zetna Sandwich is rammed to the ground. First kill goes to... 
Uh, team Overlord, Genesis. We see those Banshees really dishing out some punishment though, and the Temes is barely alive here as they back off behind a building. Yeah, the Temes were probably... yeah, there we go. Being stuck against the fish and the building is not a place to be. And blue team takes the lead right now. 2 to 0, 17, 15 on the clock. And no, almost no permanent damage suffered on blue team. Yeah, they got that little hole break, took some uh, Gatling damage on the great VGs. Uh, but nothing more than that. Now the red team spawning in in the south. Both of them, uh, we see the blue team moving out. They might be suspecting this spawn. In the, there isn't really much choice, and I think from blue team's position they had visual on two of the three red spawns, or maybe one. And they just expected that, I think there's like one in the north, one in the south, and one in the middle. We see them getting the early pop on the spire the here. Sorrow the moving in. We have an engagement. So actually bouncing on SMG's Tamas, losing the balloon to that ramp. And we actually see two very weak balloons on the red team currently. A very strong position for them. Or well, for the blue team, rather. Forward for the sandwich being double. Oh, broken. they just barely avoid those uh, flax there. Really good job by them. Send the sandwich taking a real beating from the sorrow. The great VG is not looking too good either. And we see a lot more flax yeah, coming out. Like, oh, the flax barely Ooh. misses. But that the sandwich is really not looking good either. Both red ships are both ships are good. The sandwich should probably get Goomba stomped here. Yep. Securing the now we're... one lead for red team. Ah, blue, verdammt. Yeah, now we're looking at a 1v1 here between the Sorrow and the Temis for a while. They get the whole break. They get some flax in. Well... But not a whole lot. That might I mean, not even have been wasn't really one on flag. Point. Was, it, was it even one flag? I think it had the small. Okay, not, not really sure how much Prima it actually is within the goldfish. But we see the uh, Sorrow backing off here, they're probably trying to lose their spot. Uh, Temis is following, the Great VGs is spawned in, along with the Sentences Sandwich. And Sandwich is somewhat rushing straight for the Great VGs, it Ooh, seems. Oh, and the Sorrow gets bombed, so they're gonna be a bit late to the engagement here. Ooh, that ain't good. Now the Sandwich is in the fight right now, and they are turning for the Sorrow. Yeah, the they need to get ready. that pop, because they cannot afford they to get it. popped and not pop them back. Pop there we go, pop. both fish is popped. Uh, careful though, for red team that is, there's a crane in front of you. Don't want really get stuck on that. Okay, the Grave is double broken right now, but able to back off into cover. So they will be able to recover. Fuck. Yeah, but the Sorrow is being left to maneuver greatly here and deal out a whole lot of punishment. They got a pop on the Temes and they're moving in here with the Flamer. Mm, that gives the Great BGs a chance. Oh, but they, they just bounced on the crane, so they're probably not getting out of this. So this Temes broken, losing, missing three of their four guns, getting rammed by the Spire, holding on to a third of the Perma. This is a really... Yeah, and this is just chaos. Yeah, yeah this, this is, is really chaos. <laughs> I mean, all four ships somewhat bouncing on each other on, on the terrain. They took back one of the tightest corners of Paraton to brawl in. <laughs> and Sorrow in a really awkward position here because they can't really use the carronade. They're just underneath the Sentence of Sandwich. Yeah, and the Grave VG is looking, not really looking good, but SMS Temis is looking good either. Okay, Sentence of Sandwich uh, moving away when from they get the, the break. out of that area. Both bouncing broken. And Really no, quick rebuilds on both ships one. here. Okay, SMS Temis is dead. Great VGs. Puts now the Sentence of Sandwich them. being crushed beneath the Sorrow. Not looking good for them. Yeah. And that might yeah, be the game winning kill. Yeah. Here comes the Ram. 
Nope, no, they're no taking ramp. it slow. Okay. Oh, we might see ramp. it. There we go. Yeah, there we go. That's a ram to bring it home. Washed into the terrain by uh, the sorrow. So this means Team Overlord Genesis once again obtains the victory. Final score of five-one in their favor. Yeah, they had a rough start in this tournament, but they have really been popping off here in the lower brackets. And kicking St. Anna's fire out of the tournament. And now... Is he not putting in the scores, or what's going on there? So what teams are currently playing over there? Yeah, what we know like... so far is that Team Overlord Gen is going to face off against the oh. winner. He, oh, of oh, we have match to wait 12. for one, one entire match. And Just they're going to be playing on Water Hazard, but it's going to be a while. Because, yeah. as we said, one entire match pause before we can move onwards with the next match. And so we'll be taking a short break and you can check us out in somewhere between 20 to, to 20. 2 minutes. We'll see. <laughs> Depends on how long the match takes.
Yeah, and so we're back. Time is ticking down. We're looking at the rematch between the Summary Execution and Team Overlord Gen. Last time we saw them, it ended in a 5-0 in Summary Execution's favor. Um, Would they we saw be the able Team to... Overlord Gen. Yeah, they brought a Mobula, and that did not work out in their favor. But right now, they are not messing around and going double magnate. <laughs> Only the finest combination of ships. Also, in case you haven't realized yet, we have two more. We have two intruders in our voice channel here. Alpha and Bokeshi. Hello. You say that like we're unwelcome. Ah, uh, what? <laughs> I mean, we're all cramping in here into the spectator's booth. But butts are touching, but we're making do with the space we've got. <laughs> well, at least it's warm here. Kelly. Yeah. Soon. <laughs> Double judgment. <laughs> oh dear. Double this judgment versus double magnate. Okay, ships are locked. I'm expecting a minute out of blue. I have to say. Yeah, I'll go fish. Yeah. It just changed. Huh? What? That's not very allowed. Yeah, okay, yeah better that way. Yeah, I would say a goldfish would just be suicide in this arrangement here. Ha ha! There we go, that's a minute. <laughs> Actually, what are these guys bringing? Yep, forward life facing lumberjack with a huacha, forward facing nemesis with a huacha. That would not end well. Harpoon, Tady. Yeah, there's, there's going to be a lot of disabling going on in this match. Of course. Yeah, so, and we're probably going to see red team take advantage of the massive mass of the judgments. Also, and I, put them I just to good granted use. them the minute, and there's no change. <laughs> yeah, sometimes what? teams just need a minute to to rearrange their strategy. Or maybe guns. I don't know. Nobody's changed. Yeah, just saying a little change there. Yeah, we see a minor change there. But still, it's going to be double judgment against double magnate. That's that's interesting. Okay, ships are locked again. Well, surely not your most common choice, but a very yeah. exciting one. I'm so it's, looking it's forward to that match. It's something I've. I think I've never had. I mean, I've, we've seen like one judgment or one magnate, but not two going up against each other. <laughs> and that is time. So yeah, we'll and I think it's all the... all too common in SES to see the um, gun platform or mid-range shooter along with the nimble. Um, disabled ship, so there's gonna be a real. We're running about like from what we usually out, see. Uh, people are ready up on time, somewhat. So this wasn't full started. <laughs> Peak efficiency. Yeah, finally. This is the first one. The first one that didn't full start. Could I please get so I'm gonna start us off with the GEP gun takedown piloted by Senok. Get There's gun. a judgment with a Top Gun uh, Nemesis, along with a side Artemis, a back Watcher, along with a Harpoon, and on the other side, we see a Hades. Then you've got the Macintosh Plus, piloted by Artemis, with a Top Deck Lumberjack, front facing H Hades and Ar Artemis, along with a backside Hawacha and Gatling. Shit number three is the Jabba Wookie, magnet piloted by Dimensio. On the right, he's bringing Flak Gatling Watcher. On the left, Hades, Hades, Lumberjack. The last ship is the Pure Nonsense, piloted by Finks. It's a magnet with right side Hades, Flak Watcher, and left side Gat Artemis Carol. And we already have shots being exchanged here with the Gap Gun takedown and the Macintosh Plus doing some a lot of long range fire. Also, Jan, no, you can't buy yourself into the finance of SCS with Dimitri Todas. <laughs> it was either pure nonsense here, taking, making good use of the cover against the GP gun takedown here. 
I think it's called Gap Gun. And I mean, after all, in, in the end of the day, we don't care about pronunciation. If you want to pronounce stuff right, make it either German or Swedish. Yeah, we'll just make it a regular name. <laughs> yeah, I guess that works as well. <laughs> yeah, so we see the uh, the gunshots here being exchanged. Jabberwocky losing balloon. I mean, they 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 are at, were at height seeding when they started dropping, so shouldn't be too serious. Dimension not even popping the parachute he has. Also, all pilots obviously have parachutes. Yeah, the Pure Monza is making an interesting move here around the map, uh, ever closing in on the red team as they try and make use of their superior long range right now. Currently, it seems like red team is rather stay uh, has remained in that position, just taking vantage points and stuff. While the blue team is kind of trying to engage, but they haven't found this right spot. Yet. Now pure nonsense, unspotted, moving in behind the red team. Surely they know they're somewhere around there. They've opened fire, thus revealing yeah, their position. They will actually, uh, I think I feel like Gap can take this, turning that back for them. That's something with the judgment you have need to keep in mind. There's something on the we'll back. Pure nonsense is in a really strong position here on the Macintosh Plus side now. They're hold broken. They're getting the damage in. Yeah, that's half the promo gone. Uh, with Capcom takedown turning for them, actually both red judgments turning for them, getting the front guns going. Yeah, and I think Josh blue team has a really good position right now. In SDS. <laughs> <laughs> and the USS War Crime is heading around the other side of the spire this time. Uh, did he just say US War Crime? No, USS War Crime. The, the joke being of the ship with the dual Hades is kind of awful. Every ship has an 80s. Yeah, but pure nonsense has a duel on one side. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> wow. Okay, still... The only you see them pumping break. out a whole lot of it, but it's a bit inconsistent at this range. Yeah. They don't even, they the don't have spots either, so... Be, be broken so far is the Macintosh Plus, losing a bit less than half the Brahma. Uh... This this might turn into a 23 minute sniping duel with two kills. Yeah, the Pionons are staying put so far. I mean, they did get a really good situation, so they're probably just biding their time for when they move in on the Jabberwocky here now. Making Torch Plus being a bit far further forwards, moving Balloon. I mean, at this point, we probably don't even have to care about Balloon pops anymore because they are just frequent. They're just there. Everybody's got drone shoot, everybody's got good engineers. Jabberwocky double broker! Eating some Burma there! That's one Nemesis shot into it, I think, on Artemis. More like an Artemis. Yeah, but they've got the hardcover oh. close by. Oh, but can they move again. into it? Ooh, was, was there a bounce? Oh yeah, there's a bounce. I need to be careful not to sit down in the city again. The, yeah, the, 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 just, just imagine like you're leaving the house, take a walk, and the magnet just comes down and crushes you. Yeah, there we go. They're into the hard cover. Now the pure nonsense and the gap gun are exchanging blows up here. Mm, seems like at the moment there isn't really a one ship in a better position as the sabers are just being exchanged. The gap gun takedown just broke. With flux yeah, now in the coming, double focus with the jabber walking coming in from the side. Some good Hades hits from the Jabberwocky. Pillow Clan versus Brick Clan. And people asking for the uh, double heavy gun on the front of the Judgment. Jabberwocky about to break, actually. Not a... Yeah, Magintosh seems to have the upper hand against the Jabberwocky, but the Pionons is moving in to intercept them. And the that Gap leaves Gap Gun unguarded, though. Yeah, will they be able to capitalize on that though? That's the big question. Macintosh Plus eating a watcher to the front, disabling every front gun. Pionons is being pushed up by the judgment underneath them. I'm broken. I would say but that, that was an emphasis to the Burma, it seems. And now we see the Hades coming out here. Jabberwocky broken. 
damage or nonsense, bro. Not taking too much damage. Uh, but it's damage. Oh, and the it's Nemesis damage, is bro. taking chunks out of them. Yeah, that's that's the surprising thing about Nemesis. It deals both. It's good for disabling and killing. Yeah, it's the jack of all trades gun. Yeah. I haven't seen the Nemesis as frequently in SES. People are usually bringing the Hellhound from close range to wound popping and equipment shredding, but I just, at least in the matches that I've run, it's very rare to see a Nemesis. Yeah. No, Jabber yeah, walking in a really bad situation and down they go. Nice on terrain! And that's the first kill for it. Finally, something's happening. Just took us seven minutes. <laughs> I see both judgments turning towards the pure nonsense. They don't have a whole lot of distance between them. Uh, yeah. And they are receiving a lot of fire here. Balloon down, armor down, everything down. They are dead. So, after seven minutes, red team secures a 2-0 lead. And so we'll see, uh, now the blue team is under a bit of more uh, time pressure here. So they did take a t uh, <laughs> some time getting into engagement range, or the range they wanted. And we'll see if they make this next engagement happen a bit differently, because they're a bit more pressed for time. Yeah, I mean, if we assume that the next engagement also takes seven minutes for another two kills, uh, then blue team, uh, red team will probably win due to overtime. <laughs> but I guess the next one will be a bit shorter as red team has a slight, slight bit of a disadvantage since both of their ships are missing a bit less than half the Burma. While blue team is spawning with factory new ships that already have holes in the balloons. We're just so seeing we this massive fire from both the judgments. The Jabberwock out putting its double Hades. Yeah, that's, this is a lot of Hades, Lumber, Lumberjack, like every long range gun imaginable going ham here. One, well, the Jabberwock now getting caught by the Macintosh Plus there. But they're going to be able to move into cover. The Pionons is moving out towards the Gep gun. Probably want to, uh, looking for some close range stuff, but front Nemesis close range won't be that much of a problem since both Nemesis and Artemis have no arming time. And yeah, now the pure nonsense might be caught out here a bit, depending on what yeah, the uh, Jabberwocky can try and do. Follow up into their perimeter. That's just one Artemis. They actually end up eating. And pure is not looking good right now. So that's yeah, they're in the middle break. of nowhere, they don't have a balloon, they're getting disabled by the Artemis. The Jabberwock is attempting to help here, but the Macintosh Plus is moving in to make sure they don't interrupt too much. Yeah, and pure nonsense once again was broken, losing a bit, uh, once again more, more perma. I found the broken once again with Nemesis Yeah, we see some really good Hades from the Gep Gun into the pure nonsense. Yeah. Uh... Okay, Pionance is finally pushing forwards into real, really, really close, close range. But they will die due to Artemis or Nemesis fire. The Magatosh did a really good job of just locking out the Jabberwocky there. They weren't allowed to do much in that fight. Mm. They, they got the height advantage. And in a Lumberjack duel, height advantage is, I would say, still important. Because you have a longer way, a l more way to fall. Gap gun now joining in with their big gun. Jabberwocky yeah, the Jabberwocky is not going to last long here. Nah, they will find themselves under a lot of fire. And neither of the red ships has been broken in this engagement so far. Okay, will the Jabberwocky escape? That's the big question right now. And another big question is, do they want to escape? Because with that health, uh, what are they going to do in a fight? They need to be so careful. Yeah, uh, it doesn't matter anymore as they don't survive. 4-0 lead, 4 red team, four, uh, with 9 minutes left on the clock. 
So we might actually see like an actual win and not a timer win. And right as I say that, we will drag into overtime for sure. Now Pionons is spawning in here. Up in F4. Actually sp split spawn. Oh, we see a split spawn. Very interesting from the blue team. Jabba Wookie immediately spotted. This might have been accidental. They do have the hard cover between them though, so they can easily get into a safe spot here. And mm. soon the Pionons is gonna be in a position to fire upon the red team. But they don't underestimate the adjustment turning. I know it sounds a bit silly, but with Phoenix Claw, that thing really gets turning. Okay, Jabba Wookie now under fire from the Macintosh Plus. Plus, and Gap Gun takedown going around the mountain here. Yeah, that's a really good maneuver by the Gap Gun. Yeah. Making sure they can't really use the um, the cover anymore. Mm. And with that, so the Jabba Wookie taking double, real damage. Double focused. Already missing the less than half the perma. And the Pure Nons is just very late into this engagement. Broken. Actually going on the Gap Gun, but not accomplishing much. Just disabling, actually disabling the Nemesis. That's good. Jabba is missing five of the six guns, they're missing an en engine, balloon. Seems like soon on. Oh, there we go, that's break. That yeah, and that's Jabba Wookie dead. Now. Summary execution of Ten Also known as Team Judgment. They bricked harder. Final score 5 0 in favor of Reds. Hashtag break meta. <laughs> and next I mean, a one. very unusual match, something we don't see very often, uh, but very fun to see nonetheless. Yeah, I mean, it took a bit, a bit of a long time to actually get going, but once it got going, it, well, it was fun. Um, well, that's fun. And, and with that, that summary happen. execution is moving up to the lower bracket finals against Steel Legio Lepidoptera. Is that also a rematch? I feel like it is. No, it's not. Nope. No, it's not. Okay. Oh cool, Northern Fjords. That's a good map. And so we'll see if they stick to their legendary double judgment combo here. Also, Alpha, are you streaming as well? I am not currently. Oh. Get the double stream going. <laughs> Yeah, but that was quite a legendary match. Wow. Two judgments are great. Mm -hmm. I think I've, I've, I haven't seen something break a double magnate combo so easily in quite a while. I mean, we also haven't seen double magnate in quite a while. Fair enough. Yeah, but double magnates we have seen. I don't know how long ago it was that we saw a double judgment. I feel like, like it definitely had happened before, but it was when the judgment was still stronger than it is now. Get ready? Yeah, definitely. Oh wait, is everything set up? Everything looking fine? I uh, think it should. Uh, yep. I've got the Three, right team, two, the right map. One. Is, this, is this the right map? Yep. Northern Fjords, yes. Sure. Yeah. If, if I can read numbers right, it should be there. Yes, uh, yeah, yeah. We are back and double streaming with DKR. Yay! Hello. Quad break? Oh fuck! <laughs> I mean, if they do quad break, it would be so fun. Also, it would be rather silly and a lot of fun to actually watch, but I don't think they would do it. But you know, early, actually, earlier today in my actually my very first match, I had quadruple pyro. 
Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's that sounds that's a bit hardling. more believable than what we usually see. Yeah, one artling though. One artling, oh, two meta, no one way. Oh. Uh. <laughs> I doesn't have a name. <laughs> Bamboozle ball. Oh, please, please, please do catch up a brick. Seems like we're looking at a mirror up here with uh, Judgment Goldfish on both sides right now. Oh, actually, we have a full mirror right now with two Judgments and two Fishes. Ah, uh, we almost had the brick match. Yeah, we're yeah but that's a bit, bit closer. A bit closer to what we usually see with the um, mid to long range ship along with the nimble disabled ship. And Goldfishes have been strong recently. I mean, especially on blue team's side, you actually have opportunities from the beginning of the match to do keep the big ship behind and have some cover for the big ship while the light ship goes in, gets the spots, and keeps the other team distracted. Now a Pyramidian from blue team. Ooh, pointy goes on bad. No, we've seen that one before. Yeah. It didn't really play out well in their match, but it might come on totally different here against SLL. The point he end was going into the ground more than anything else. Mm -hmm. Always depends on the lum lumbar or carrot pressure coming from the enemy. Ah, uh, now it's just a full mix. The dream has been destroyed. <laughs> no! Well, it's... Who is Batman calls for a map change to Batcave? Absolutely. No. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. Splish Splash, your opinion is trash. <laughs> oh, You make me sad. Well then, be sad, but we're not going to play Bad Cave in a tournament. <laughs> and the reason why that is bad, why Bad Cave is bad, <laughs> is yesterday. It's because Saldurim has no taste. In that case, <laughs> we have a minute left until we begin the match. And please let me actually finish my thought, because <laughs> Batcave has shared spawns, and yesterday, in King of the King of the Hill tournament, we saw what disasters uh, shared spawns can uh, cause. Yeah, that's right. They do have had quite some I mean, interesting I situations. Say, I do like Batcave. It's a really nice map. The only thing I hate about it is the shared spawns. We don't call them disasters. We call them interesting situations. Okay. Yeah, a, lo a lot that's of... As stuff. far as euphemism goes. So, seems people are set on Spire Crusader versus Pyra Fish. We've seen a lot more Crusaders recently. Hmm? I feel like the, the sheer amount of guns that they can bring makes them very viable, especially against the uh, current uh, balloon pressure meta. Hmm. You're, you're literally immune to it. So how do we want to do the ship callouts once we get into game? Everybody gets one. <laughs> All right, in the, I'll in do the number order one. we're sitting in the in the spectator spot here. So yeah, Alpha one, Bo two, DKF three, and I do four. All right, that works. I do three. Yes, you do three. I do three. <laughs> and by that, not me. Don't mean three ships. You do ship three. Let's take a look at what we have on the field. Merwin is bringing T-Pose Moth, the ultimate pose of dominance. Oh, stop the timer. <laughs> Wait, that's not my job. I thought I, you were resting. <laughs> You're the ref, Sal, in any case. <laughs> they're asserting their dominance with their T-Pose. They're using a Lumberjack, a Gatling Gun, and Jewel Banshees. All right, ship number two is piloted by Moshena, it's a crusader who is Batman. We do have a Hellhound and a Minotaur in front, followed up by Gatling on the, and Artemis on the middle deck, and another Artemis and Flak on the top deck. Right, looking at the pointy goes bad. Goes in bad. Piloted by Senok, a Artling, so Artemis and uh, Gatling up top, along with a Flak on three. Put to very good juice, along with a Artemis on four. And 
<laughs> Last ship, the home resonance. It's a fish by the Ultimate Sea Spring Flame on the right carrow front, double bench on the left. Oh, looks like Xenic finally figured out how to put the pointy end into the bad thing and successfully picked up the first kill for summary execution team. It looks like he's not gonna stop like there. The, uh, team Poo's Morph, T Poe's Morph will soon follow us. They're being chased by the home resonance. And they are up against some terrain. Yeah, Blue Team has an incredible pressure with that flame. Uh, the Gatling is going out. Yeah, watch. Uh, there's just so much. I mean, the carronade. There's so much to look out for on the Blue Team. We did want yeah. to costing home residents a little bit, though. They're sitting just above half perma. So that was actually the first two kills in not even one and a half minutes. And Blue Team now has really good vision on the Red Team spawns here. So, will the summary execution be able to get, break the current speedrun record of two and a half minutes? I'm gonna guess unless they can get three kills in the next 30 seconds, no. Yeah, uh, yeah, fair point actually, and also they are facing the wrong way, kinda. Yeah. Red team immediately spotted upon spawning, which really puts the pressure on them. Tifo's mouth going to fire on pointy goes in bad just below the clouds here. Who is Batman following as home resonance comes around the rocks? Really good flank by them there. The only question is they might get a bit exposed here. But the pointy goes in bad is not that far out of the engagement. And the home resonance is really looking, locking down the Tifo's mouth with another break there. And a attempted Goomba Stomp. Uh, T-Po is most that. looking really bad that's sitting on the ground it. right now. And they get Ram killed by the whole Resonance. So, if you ever wonder how do you want to kill stuff with a blender fish, Terrain is your friend. Not so much a Goomba Stomp as a Goomba Smush. And while we are talking about that, the pointy goes and bat is about to do a lot of damage on the Who is Batman. Oh, and a nasty ram from the fish! That's coming in! Beautiful <laughs> execution! <laughs> going for another ram! <laughs> They're like so nice and nice and screaming. It's like at the red and friendly flags exchanged in between the teams. Now, the red team doesn't have many options when it comes to spawns here. The blue team has very good vision over the entire area right now. I would say they will spawn south. Actually, this seems more like north. Uh, we're about to find out in uh, the next 10 seconds, I believe. <laughs> hmm. Oh, there they are. Far east. Immediately but spotted though, and the pressure is on once again. They are hustling to move out of there, get into positions. Well, it's, it seems like this, the, the sub five minutes is still possible. I guess I can get a kill in the next 36 seconds. Uh, never underestimate the pressured one. I don't know. Yep, classic move here. Goldfish gets behind this fire. And the Artling just goes in for the Crusader. Going in for the Ram, actually, but uh, who's Batman dodging that? Yeah, interestingly, the the T-Pose Moth are opting to help their friend. However, they leave themselves very exposed to the Home Resonance. Setting down low, and they're just going to get ground down here. Although, Pointy End goes in bad, also not having the best time. Yeah, they're double broken, but that's just the... Uh, yeah, but they've the, been the brought down to, to the Spires level with who's Batman still stuck way up there. Yeah, another the T-Pole moth under fire. A lot of fire, actually. Who's Batman finally found the way uh, down here, but Pointy Goes and Bird just simply reverses and gets the guns going. He pulls moth. Dies! Much, there isn't much to say there. Well, not quite in five minutes, but close enough. Yeah, I feel like five and a half or so. But it doesn't matter, because I'm, summary execution is a victory. 
I think this might have just been like a ship choice difference here. We've seen SLL do some really good flying. It's I was not expecting this outcome. Yeah, I wasn't expecting, especially I wasn't expecting it to be 5-0. Let's take a look I mean, at the usually the spire is very strong, but the uh, the goldfish just proved the dominance there with getting into the back line and really messing them up. Absolutely. And that good flying has now knocked down the Steel Legio Lepidoptera. The summary execution team is rising up to meet the Pomelos in the finals. Ooh. There we go. <laughs> Mervyn Sundstrom. Pommel. Well, that's Pommel. a combination I'm looking forward to. Pommel. Uh, I'm sure that'd be a great logo for that. Pommel. Uh, Pommel. Uh, l l <laughs> Something like that. Well, I mean, that would be up to me because I have been the supplier of the Pommel logos since they started out. <laughs> oh. Well, you better think of something good. I feel like the SLL logo of this week was great. Yeah. I also really like the logo of St. Elmo's Fire. Fires. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, we didn't have them on this stream. Let's just put them up here. I hope you're not cropping it like someone else. No, I'm oh. the logos in their full glory. Yeah, quite pretty. In case anybody's unfamiliar, St. Elmo's fire is, uh, I guess, an electrical discharge that happens on structures moving through the air. It was very common to see on sailing ships during stormy weather, and it would uh, basically have I guess lightning, or I guess electrical art. I'm not sure how to describe it. Plasma, I guess, or ionized gas, or from in the atmosphere, running on the tips of the masts on ships. Mm. Wow, that must look glorious. That would be creepy if you don't know where it comes from. Yeah, this logo uh, doesn't quite show, I guess, what the actual one looks like. There are better paintings of it. Mm -hmm. And then there's also modern examples of it as well. But without further ado here, I'm going to make a hasty adieu to you all as I get ready for, well, whatever I do in the evening. It's been really nice <laughs> having you here, and it's been really nice being here. Thank you to, to you all, and I'll be moving yeah. out. Thanks to you. See ya. Have a good one. So, to you viewers as well, thank you all for coming out here. I will be closing down in a minute and bring you over to Alpha Stream where the finals will be shown. Uh, it's been a really fun night. We've seen some really great matches and uh, yeah, have a great evening. <laughs>